okay, bro, so you've been learning code, you've been building projects, you have your portfolio up and ready deployed on Vercel and whatnot. You have your resume ready to roll. And now the question is, how do you find these web dev jobs? There are two main options in my opinion, and I'm gonna to explain to you how they work and what you should expect from them, okay? The first thing that you need to do before you even apply for a job is to figure out what kind of job you want, okay? So I'll give you a few criterias because this will help you massively when it comes to negotiating your salary, when it comes to figuring out if this is the right type of job for you because you might end up working in a job you hate just for the sake of getting a job and in that job you will not learn a lot and then if you don't learn a lot you will not earn a lot okay so the first thing that you need to figure out is what company you are looking for are you looking for a corporation are you looking for a startup or are you looking for a web development agency I'm not gonna make uh, too many comments about these three types. Maybe in another video, if you're interested in, let me know in the comments. But these are the three main ones that I've seen in my entire career, okay? Maybe there are others. Now, the type of role that you're looking for, are you looking for a front-end position, back-end position, full-stack position? You need to figure out and be specific um, with what would you like ideally and what would you settle for, right? So maybe ideally you'd like to become a front-end developer and work with React and uh, Next, let's say, but the job that's gonna be offered to you is gonna be more like full stack, okay? And you will do some React, but you also have to do some Node and maybe MongoDB or SQL, like Postgres or MySQL, et cetera, et cetera. Now, will this role be remote? My channel is always about remote roles, but maybe you're not inter interested in that. Maybe you are looking for hybrid roles. That means you'll be working at home three days a week and then two days a week you'll be in the office. I think even though I'm promoting this remote job kind of thing and everyone wants it, I think there is a lot of value to be next to a mentor, next to people that have more experience. It's way easier to reach out to them, tap them on the shoulder and ask for some help, okay? Whenever you get stuck, because you will get stuck and uh, the type of industry that you are looking for. So an industry could be automotive or e-commerce. I like cars, so if I would go back into uh, development, if I would be looking for a developer job, I would try to find something in the automotive space because I really like cars, okay? Maybe you like Teslas and you want to get a Tesla. Maybe find, you know, some company that's doing something with electric cars. Uh, the location, if the job is going to be in person, figure out where and how far that job would be from your house, okay, ideally. Then how flexible you will be. Is it gonna be like a strict nine to five or you'll have some roof, room for maneuver? And this also comes in close with how many hours per week will you be spending at work? Because if you go for a startup, you need to expect spending more than 40 hours a week sometimes, right? Because the entire company literally depends on you, believe it or not where if you get, um, I don't know, if you get a corporate job, you'll be working less, you have more flexibility in my opinion, but you will be more dead in your job, in my opinion, okay? Then what kind of culture are you looking for? Okay, for me, culture is not really important as long as I can get along with people, I don't really care what the culture is, you know? I don't care about ping pong tables, I don't care about pizza nights, but maybe for you that's important, so you need to figure that out. Ideal salary, how much would you like to make ideally? Okay, not the minimum amount, that's something else. Ideally, would you like to make ideally 90K? Or would you like to ideally make 100K? And then what is your minimum salary? What are you willing to settle for, for your first dev job? That could be 70K or 60K, whatever that would be. You need to figure it out beforehand so you know exactly what to talk with, with the recruiter, with the hiring manager, etc., etc. okay? Then what kind of benefits are you looking for? Do you want paid gym membership? Do you want a budget for learning? All this stuff you should be aware of before you even start searching for a job. And personal time off, some companies have a set amount of days per year for personal time off, but some companies have unlimited personal time off. Again, you need to mix and match all these uh, uh, bullet points that I've mentioned here, put them in a spreadsheet and then give them a value, like how much out of 10 are you interested in having this um, type of job, right? Or how much, how important is it for you to be fully remote? How much 
how important is it for you to be able to have a minimum salary of uh, 60k per year, right? Because that could be a 10 out of 10, but your ideal salary could be a 6 out of 10. So then you can um, figure out if this job or this recruiter that's reaching out to you from this company will give you the right thing for you. Because it's also important to enjoy, you know, this first job. You don't wanna just get it for the sake of getting it because if you don't enjoy it there, your first year is gonna be an absolute mess. You won't learn anything and your passion for programming, your passion for your future is gonna disappear and you'll be like, oh, I got scammed, right? So figure out this and then, now we get into the meat and the potatoes of this video. Although what I explained to you, it's also important. The meat and the potatoes, there are two ways of getting a dev job. The first one is with cold applications and this goes, it's very simple. You just figure out the big job board in your country and then you just apply there. Now, what I would suggest you here to do if you want to be smart about it and if you value your time because your time is the only asset that you won't be able to regenerate like billionaires and trillionaires are spending a shit ton of money to try to figure out how to stay alive right because time is gonna pass and you'll die so figure out how to use your time in the most efficient way and with cold applications what you can do, and this is smart and you will not do it because you are too proud, I know because I've seen a bunch of people not taking this advice, is to outsource your applications to someone else from a third world country like Philippines, India, Pakistan, you know, those countries. You pay someone five bucks, you find them on, on Fiverr, you look up uh, a virtual assistant in there and they will apply for jobs on your behalf. And you might be like, oh, but this is my job. No, your job is to get a job and your job is to do everything in your powers to get that job, right? And then if you think about it, like if you spend one, two hours just applying, you know, you want to become a developer because you want to have an exciting job. And then what you do is the most stupid thing ever, which is just applying, you know, like, like a robot, like this is the worst thing that you can do in your life. Just do something repetitive without thinking. That's what you want to do? No, outsource it, let someone else do it, they will apply to hundreds of jobs on your behalf while you are out there preparing for those interviews, preparing the questions, preparing your delivery, uh, learning more skills, building up your portfolio, making it even better, right? That's what I would do. That's the cold application side. The warm application side means going on LinkedIn and then you look at those companies that are uh, hiring right now and then you see which one matches the criteria that we just discussed about in the beginning of this video. You figure out exactly, okay, this company seems like my, my piece of cake, right? You take that company in an Excel sheet or in Notion, and then you put it in a table, and then you do some research on that company. Like you see what they put in their email newsletter, you study their landing page, you study the type of clients that people are working with, uh, you study their Twitter, their Instagram account, the LinkedIn account, you study their socials, you see if the owners have been in, a, in an interview somewhere on YouTube, you see if the owners have been in a, uh, on a podcast or something like that, you study that company, you become like a detective and you figure out exactly what's happening in that company. And then this information is gonna allow you to talk with the hiring managers, with the recruiters. They will see that you are interested, not just interesting, okay? Then once you have this information, you will go and you'll find maybe let's like, say 10 to 15 people that are working at that company, ideally recruiters, hiring managers and software developers and you connect with them, okay? Also in the meantime, you can also build a spreadsheet, okay, in Notion with the people that are working at that company. So if you know how Notion works, you'll be able to figure out what I'm saying. If not, just use a Google Sheet, that's also fine. And then you find information about these people, like maybe you try to find their email, uh, maybe you try to find their social media and you try to connect with them, you study them, right? Like an investigator. Obviously don't be creepy, but try to understand these people so you can have something, some point of reference, you know, when it comes to reaching out to them and connecting with them, you can message, you can email them, not just message them on LinkedIn. If you find their e uh, email somewhere, if you do your research, you can, you can definitely find that. Uh, there are tools that will allow you to find emails uh, from people, right? Um, but you need to do your own research and see how that uh, would work. I've done it myself for my students, but you can definitely do it as well if you, if you um, 
are smart about it and you put like 15, 20, 30 minutes into this. This research on companies is gonna take you some time, right? It's gonna take maybe five, six hours per company. So that's why it's important to outsource the cold applications to someone else that can do that low level job for you. So you have time to do this, which is gonna be more rewarding, okay? All the big software developers have been laid off from all these companies and what do you think they do? They do cold applications, okay? So with cold applications, it's gonna be 10 times harder than before. All my students got hired with cold applications and I still recommend them uh, to do this, to cold apply, but it's a lottery, right? And this new way that I'm recommending to you, it's gonna work and nobody else does it. So you'll be one of the only ones who do it and then you'll be more successful if you actually go ahead and reach out to these people. Now. The thing is, you will not do this. There is no skill in the game for you. It's hard, I understand. But if you sometimes want something more than what you have right now, you have to be prepared to go the extra mile and do something that is uncomfortable for you and something that is unfamiliar to you, okay? That's how life is, you know, like winners are winning, losers are losing, okay? Some people are sitting and complaining and some others are trying to figure out how things work and are trying to figure out how to solve the problem and the question is are you going to solve your problem or are you gonna let someone else solve your problem it's not your fault that we have this recession and whatnot it's not your fault that programming is hard it's not your fault that a bunch of people want to become programmers it's not your fault but it's your problem software engineering is still a rewarding field and it's still going to be a rewarding field and it's still gonna pay you a lot of money and you are still going to be good in the next you know one two three four five ten years just get in and then you'll figure out a way to make more money invest in different things in assets invest in the store market whenever it comes back the point of this video is uh, how to find web development jobs without experience and without a cs degree now if you are a complete beginner and you don't know where to start your coding journey or if you've been coding for some time maybe six months nine months one year and if you have if you feel like you have no direction you feel like you're not making as much progress as you could you are just spinning your wheels for no reason and you just cannot figure out what is the right step for you or maybe you finished a coding boot bootcamp like a year or two years ago and you are not getting any responses from your applications then it's time for you to apply for a free consultation call with me and see if i can help you in my mentorship program okay so the link for that is in the description uh, i worked with many people some of them are making 120k a year but the average is making roughly 80 to 85 thousand dollars a year which is pretty good you know some of them they were making 40 before they've made some sacrifices to work with me and now they double their salary like that some of them in six months some of them in one year this thing works if you work okay so i'll see you in the next one bye, -bye.